Let's talk some more about some two-stroke oils. All right, so I thought when I started this that I knew a pretty good amount about two-stroke oils. And since making this video about why not to run Steel Ultra, and most of that was based on, you know, stuff that I'd read on the internet and, you know, some firsthand experiences at the bench. I mean, this is what I do for a living. I don't do anything else. I work on primarily chainsaws and other small engine stuff. Um, and, you know, I got a flannel shirt on. I don't have a lab coat. If you're looking for the exact science of it all, do your own research. Um, and as these comments have rolled in, if you scroll down, you look, I've tried to respond to just about everything. And before I open up my big fat mouth, I try and at least go verify something, whether it's using the MSDS sheets that are available online for all these different oils. Um, and then started looking into this JASO rating and what does that actually mean? Okay, a little quick internet search here. And JASO is the, the engine oil standard uh, it's an engine oil standard. So this goes for four stroke motor, you know, where you'd actually have oil in the crankcase and two stroke oils. Um, the FA is no longer out there, best I can tell. And basically what this says is, and you can kind of see the progression of the oils where FB, you know, has got increased lubric lubricity and some detergent um and it you know a low smoke and so there, there is an improvement over fa which is no longer noted um then fc came along and they had they started adding some more detergents so you'd have even less smoke and less exhaust system blocking all right and then fd so anyway we're not giving up any lubricity in any of these ratings they all seem to carry the same lubricity standard you know that hasn't changed and i think from oil to oil, oil to oil it's better in some than others and then we finally get to the top tier rating which is fd so there's a higher detergency required for that oil so when you look at you know this is part of the application form so when you look at the fb fc fds the lubricity rating is the same minimum standard and then when you look down at the exhaust system blocking characteristics, it looks like the FD is FC and FD rated oils are double. Uh, so that goes to um, what we're saying about these FD oils running cleaner. All right, let's move on. These are some of the oils that I've run tested and I don't have any Sabre here on hand but uh, it certainly has done about as good as anything I've run so far. But most of these, well, actually all of these oils here are ester or mineral-based oils. And mineral oils actually run very clean. And the older, you know, this is a mineral-based oil. Now, however, nowhere on this bottle does it have a JASO rating. I mean, there's, there's nothing there. Whereas the Ultra is an ester-based oil, which seems to need a little bit more detergent package. But if we can get you focused, meets Gesso FB, okay? And that's where we see the lack of detergency in the Ultra. Um, and typically, these are more clearly marked. And when I look through the... Uh, the application process for the JASO rating, they're actually specific about how it's supposed to be labeled. It should be obvious like this. I mean, there's a, a size and a notation that uh, it needs to. Um, you know, why Dominator does not have, I had to look it up. You know, nothing on here, you know, it says, you know, it's okay, you know, it's a TC rated oil, but you have to actually go to the website to find out that it's an FC rated oil. And I think that's why the Sabre runs cleaner than the Dominator. And people are gonna flame the crap out of me because, you know, Dominator is supposed to be the second coming. Um, I think the Sabre actually runs better. As far as boat oils, you're gonna have to do your research. And the reason why I run Schaefer's is because Tree Monkey, Scott Coons, 
um, has run it for years and there's long-term testing there. And I've witnessed the same results in my own saws. You run what you want, you know, stuff like this, you know, there's absolutely nothing on here and you're not going to get anything out of it other than it's a two stroke oil and no ratings, no nothing pack four, you know, and, and let's get this straight that none of the manufacturers make their own oil, you know, pro select. You think I'll run that? Seriously doubt it. But there's nothing on there that tells you anything. It does say that it's blended in Shreveport, Louisiana, and there is a very large uh, refinery down there or blending facility that does blending for a lot of these companies here in the U.S. Y'all got to think before you type. I've seen... <sighs> Uh, here's a notable one. Uh, somebody said, oh, you shouldn't see oil pulling in the crankcase like that. That's bad. Well, you, let's look at your car. Your, your car has an oil sump in it, and it has an oil pump that disperses engine oil throughout all the moving surfaces to keep things lubricated. So if your crankcase is dry as a popcorn fart when I take it apart, that's not good. You know, you've got to have some kind of cling to your oil. You know, it, for everybody else that says, well, they're not mixing it right. Let me ask, has anybody ever been just absolutely busted in the head when they're at the gas pump with a pre-measured bottle of oil and a gas pump in their hand and a gas can in front of them? Let, let's, okay, maybe there's somebody out there that looks at it and goes, man, I just... I, I'm lost. I, I don't know what to do here. You know, the word variables, I'm only going to use to bring up that you can get a little too deep into that word. Um, but in real world applications, you know, when we talk about just pull your muffler and take a look. What's it look like? Can you see the film strength? Obviously, you know, and I take the, I do these videos we actually tear the saw down and get a chance to look inside and see how the crankcase looks. And, and, and that's part of what I can offer to help you without you having to tear down your saw. Most people aren't that comfortable doing that. Um, I've mentioned a lot in the comments about having a more forgiving oil. And those more forgiving oils typically are going to stay right there in that window of an FD rated oil. So you're going to have a higher detergency factor. And if you're not running at optimum temperatures, it's still going to burn because a lot of these FD oils have a lower flash point, you know, because all of this two stroke oil has to burn. It has to be part of the combustion process and how cleanly it burns dictates where your carbon buildup is going to be. If you got a high flash point and low detergency in an FB oil, you're going to run into issues. You know, let's talk about it in like, um, like a hedge trimmer, you know, so you're using your hedge trimmer and you're partial throttle, partial throttle, wide open, wide open, partial throttle, partial throttle. You're going to need a more forgiving oil for that for a regular weed eater. Same thing. Who cranks up their weed eater and runs it full tilt boogie. Actually, somebody said they did. They run it like they stole it. So there's that one guy it might be more, but typical operation. Just think about it. You know, zip, 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 zzz, zip, 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 zip. Uh, you know, that kind of intermittent use, you know, sometimes the larger saws that are just going to be doing long extended cuts. So if you got a 90 cc saw and you got a three foot bar on it, there's not a whole lot of dilly dallying, you know, it's all business and you're running with the saws going at optimum operating or full operating temperature. Um, you know, your oil's probably gonna work a little bit better. Um, let's stop and talk for a second about ratios and why I think that's important. I'd like to argue the idea that 50 to one is to meet emission standards and that only your top tier oils that are FD rated are really going to do an adequate job at lubrication. Now on the bright side, because these FD rated oils are 
you know, and I'm not just uh, uh, one of the ones I don't have here. That's another FD rated oil. That's very good is the VP. Um, but anyway, at 50 to one, you've just got enough lubrication. And uh, so when everybody says, oh, you mix 40 to one, it's it's a ton. OK, I've measured out the difference here. And this is like a lab grade beaker. This is 17 milliliters, which is 0.6 of an ounce. That's the difference when you go from 50 to 1, 40 to 1. There. There's a whole tablespoon of oil. I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> But what this does is allow your gasoline not to dilute your lubrication quite as bad. That was everything. I mean, there's a whisper left in the bottom of this. I mean, it's there. So you get what I'm saying. You're not going to clog your spark arrester. You're not going to foul out your spark plug at 40 to 1 by any stretch. What you are doing is allowing your oil to cling to your internal engine components better. And with your top tier FD rated oils, you're also going to have that detergent package in there to keep it burning clean. Does that make sense? Just to show you how complicated figuring all this out is, and it's not, it's just not as simple as you think. You know, so you look at all these oils that Castrol makes, right? You know, there's 2T, there's 2T Go, there's Super TT. And then you look over here and most of them are FC, 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 FB, you know. So um, I've tried to just comb through this list. And this is actual, the, the Jasso breakdown of, you know, it's a whole list of, hey, where are we at? So I can come up here to the top and that's current information right there from November, 2022. And yeah, there's probably, uh, I think there's like 15 or 20 pages of all this nonsense. Um, so here, let's take this over to the bench and just have a look at what we got. So, and, I, and I'm just trying to stick this to common i'm not singling that out that's the only fb oil on the planet but just readily available oil from your manufacturers from steel husky echo you know something you'll find at home depot something you'll find at tractor supply wherever you might buy your two-stroke oils um so fc so we've got better detergent package dominators there um and the Castrol 2T Go is FC rated. Um, here's our FD list. So every last one of the Echo oils, the Power Blend, the Power Blend Gold, their Low Smoke, their Red Armor. If you pick an, an Echo oil, it's going to be FD rated. Um, with Husky, it's the XP Plus, and their Low Smoke also, according to that list I just showed you is um is fd rated if you come down here the hp that they've had around forever is like a verified formula i, I don't know what that means um for whatever it's worth i've seen some long-term use of the hp oil at 50 to 1 and i've seen some piston skirt wear you know long term this is a guy that does commercial falling and the steel hp is i can't find any nomenclature rating for that oil um that doesn't mean it's the, either one of these are bad oils it's just they haven't gone through and had it certified at these top tier levels uh the red max uh is your uh is an fd oil the john Sered, um hp super now this is unusual because here in the states or at least in my area of the united states in the southeast the only thing i've ever seen in a steel dealership or an Ace Hardware is just the traditional HP orange bottle and Ultra. Um, there's different formulations for Canada and Europe. I don't know why. Um, VP Racing, 
make sure that they're full synthetic. That's what I was able to find. That's FD rated. Uh, Sabre's an FD rated oil as well. So I hope that's clear as mud. You know, just know what you're using and uh, we'll talk about fuel storage here. Let me set you down. All right. Hopefully we're a little bit smarter. After all that, I know I am. I've learned a lot by replying to the comments. Um, at this point in time, I want to ask you for a like and a subscribe if you feel inclined. You've been modestly entertained. Um, going forward, I think the only thing I really want to touch on is maybe fuel. Um, and just be mindful of what's out there. Your regular pump gas with ethanol is going to have a pretty short shelf life. You can go to the uh, manufacturers. You know, I think Sunoco's got some stuff out there as, as well as, as a few others. Um, and basically what you're looking at with ethanol fuel is about a 30 day window where you need to be able to turn that over. So if you've just got like a weed eater and don't mix up a whole gallon of gas, uh, want to see, you know, fresh gas cycle through on a regular basis. Um, so if that's the case, then just, you know, buy a quart of canned fuel. Um, there's plenty of brands out there. I've heard some things about some that's for a whole nother day, but as far as like the storage on that, it seems to go better because it's an off-road type fuel. It doesn't have the same chemicals and detergents that's, our cars have been engineered to accept, you know, stainless steel fuel rails, you know, no more rubber O-rings and things like that. Where our chainsaws and our weed eaters and backpack blowers also have rubber, rubber fuel lines, you know, diaphragms and the carburetor, and those will stiffen up with, you know, sour fuel. Um, if you can run non-ethanol gas, um, you've got a better window for shelf life. Uh, I think the accepted, Time frame is about 90 days before the gasoline starts to fall off. You know, pure gasoline, just regular pump, non-ethanol fuel. Um, and you know, and that's, fresh fuel's always good. Um, storage wise, you'll have to think about it this way. The less air that's in whatever container you have. So if it's full 95% of the way to the top, there's a, only a little bit of air in there and the fuel deteriorates slower. And this is from the gasoline manufacturers. As you bring the container down to a lower level and there's more air in there, you're susceptible to the fuel aging faster. So you can do one of two things. You can store your small engine over the winter time, slap full of gas. Um, I would also recommend dumping that fuel out in the springtime and starting with a fresh batch of mixed gas. I would not use your fuel, no matter what it is, from, you know, the end of the season through the winter into the springtime. Um, fresh gas is where it's at. What I see, um, some other things with uh, shortened use. Um, hedge trimmers are one of the worst. Generators are absolutely the worst. If you leave fuel in your generator, you know, Use some form of a stabilizer in it, keep it slap full to the brim, and, or, you know, just completely leave it empty of fuel. Run it dry, shut it down, and then when you need to use it, you know, keep some gas, you know, your gas that you've got for your lawnmower or whatever, and throw that in there, get the generator running, and move on uh, with some fresh gas from a gas station that's got power. Um, you know, weed eaters, Typically used all summer long, so that's fine. Hedge trimmers, they get used once or twice a year, or sometimes you don't even use it in a year. You may forget to, or just don't get around to it. Um, again, probably best just when you're done using it, dump the gas out, run it dry, put it up. And when you're ready to use it again, pour fresh mixed gas in there and go from there. So I, I think that's my two cents on gasoline. Um, you know, ethanol's got its quirks and when it ages, 
and it attracts moisture, that phase separation, when you look at it in a clear container and you see it's almost like a viscous liquid. It's not just water, it's the water and the ethanol together. And that stuff is very corrosive. It'll eat the inside of these carburetors out and it'll actually, over long term, turn your fuel line into something gummy that's pliable. Um, it's pretty disgusting, anyway. So take care of your equipment, be mindful of, you know, your fuel and always use fresh fuel and your stuff will last longer. All right. Thanks for watching y'all. Have a great day.